Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, for those of you who've been watching the channel for a while now, you know back in August we did a uh, video on whether or not suppressors are legal in Washington State. That, of course, led to another video a couple days later about can you convert a solvent trap into a suppressor in Washington State. And at that time, I made it very clear that I did not think that that was a wise idea under both state and federal law. Well, lo and behold, it appears that the ATF may have agreed with me on that one, and I'm not proud to say that the ATF agreed with me, but they have begun cracking down on this and it made several raids. So let's talk about today, is the ATF really coming after those who purchase solvent traps? Okay, before we get rolling, you guys know the drill. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button down below. If you want to stay up to date on issues related to your Second Amendment rights, click the subscribe button down below. Click the little bell logo if you want to be notified when we post new videos. And most importantly, let's keep the comments and discussions coming. That's how we're going to get our videos out to more lawful and responsible gun owners like yourself. Okay, so the issue today is these solvent traps that can be easily milled out, have the cap milled out, and basically you convert them into a suppressor. Now, I mentioned in the video back in August that I didn't like this idea and I thought there was both state and federal concerns. Well, I guess the ATF shared some of that concern because just last month, they uh, conducted a raid on a company called Diversified Machinery. Now, Diversified Machinery is one of the companies who was machining these solvent traps. As it turns out, though, that raid was the fifth raid that the ATF has carried out over the last year for various manufacturing companies that were producing these solvent traps. Worse than that, though, is during each and every one of these raids, the ATF um, confiscated all sales and shipment records. And therefore, they now have the name, address, and contact information of every single per person who purchased one of these. What does that entail? Well, a lot of them are beginning to get nasty little letters from the ATF. Now, what does this letter say? Well, it says as follows. Warning notice, you may be in violation of federal law. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives is responsible for enforcing federal firearms laws. ATF has received information that you have acquired or at have attempted to acquire one or more silencer kits, silencers, or silencer parts from diversified machine, which has been, have been determined to be silencers, none of which are registered to you in the National Firearms Registration and Transfer Record as required by the National Firearms Act, NFA, Title 26, USC, Chapter 53. The letter goes on to further state, this letter officially notifies you that it is a felony violation of federal law to possess a silencer that is not registered to you and that any silencer device that are unlawfully possessed are subject to seizure and forfeiture by the federal government. Possession of any one of the unregistered silencer devices could result in prosecution for criminal violation of federal law as well as potential state violations. Any further purchase or possession of such devices can subject you to prosecution as well. And then to make sure that we are all clear on the law as the ATF sees it, the letter further states, the Gun Control Act, Title 18 U.S.C. Section 921A24, defines the term silencer as any device for silencing, muffling, or diminishing the report of a portable firearm, including any combination of parts designed or redesigned and intended for use in assembling or fabricating a firearm silencer or firearm muffler, and any part intended only for use in such assembly or fabrication. And finally, the letter states, Title 26, USC, Sections 584-5A7 and 5861-D make it unlawful for anyone to possess a silencer as defined in Title 18, USC, Section 921 that is not registered in accordance with the provisions of the NFA. Therefore, you cannot lawfully possess a silencer without first being a special occupational taxpayer and having the silencer registered in the NFRTR. And the letter finally concludes... Immediately contact your local ATF office within 30 days of receipt of this letter to coordinate the abandonment of any silencers. Any future purchase or possession of such devices can subject you to prosecution as well. Signed sincerely, Keith Krolchik, the acting special agent in charge. 
Okay, so let's go over what the law is as it relates to suppressors in Washington State. Are suppressors legal in Washington State? The answer is yes. Under RCW 9.41.250 subsection C, they are legal with exceptions. The statute specifically states, every person who, C, uses any contrivance or device for suppressing the noise of any firearm unless the suppressor is legally registered and possessed in accordance with federal laws is guilty of a gross misdemeanor punishable under Chapter 9A.20 of the RCW. And again, to refresh our memory, a gross misdemeanor, of course, is punishable by up to 364 days in jail and a $5,000 fine. So what 941.250 subsection C is saying is, listen, it is unlawful to possess any device or any component of a device which is meant to muffle or suppress the sound of a gun unless it has been properly purchased and registered through the federal government. Okay, so what does federal law then require if you want to possess a suppressor? Well, there's one of two ways in which you can come into possession of a suppressor. The first and most common way is that you go and purchase a completed suppressor from a reputable FFL or online from a reputable dealer. Now, when you do that, please understand that you're going to need to fill out an ATF Form 4. And you're going to have to pay your $200 tax stamp. And unless you've filled out your ATF Form 4, and unless you've paid the tax stamp, and unless the ATF has sent you correspondence, which essentially gives you the blessings to now use that suppressor, you cannot use it until the ATF has cleared it. Now, if you want to manufacture your own suppressor, and in this case, when we're talking about solvent traps, we know that they will screw right on to a threaded barrel. It's a cap at the other end that we need to mill out according to the caliber which, of the round that we'd want to discharge through that particular solvent trap. Now, if we're going to manufacture a suppressor, we need to fill out an ATF Form 1. And a failure to do either one of those, if we purchase a suppressor and don't fill out an ATF Form 4 and pay our $200 tax stamp and get the okay from the ATF, or if we construct our own suppressor, don't fill out the Form 1, don't pay the tax stamp, we are facing serious felony charges on the federal level. In addition to that, we are facing gross misdemeanor charges on the state level. Now, here's the rub for everybody who may have purchased one of these things. It's one thing to purchase a solvent trap because obviously there is legitimate reasons to capture solvents that you use to clean your barrels and things such as that. So they do have a legitimate purpose. What I had advised in the video in August is, listen, if you're gonna start milling out that cap, if you're gonna convert this thing and you don't fill out a Form 1, you're in serious trouble. As it turned out, I was a little wrong about that one because what the ATF is saying, and this is the ATF's interpretation of what's going on. And we can do a whole nother video about the problems with ATF interpretations. But what the ATF is saying is that these solvent traps, as is, purchased as is, constitute a suppressor. Many of them have indentations on the cap, which actually allows or guides an individual as to where holes should be drilled. And the ATF is relying on that to say that this shows clear intent by the manufacturer to actually have this milled out, thus converting it to a suppressor. So it's not just the question now, did you buy a solvent trap and mill it out? If you did, you clearly have a suppressor, you clearly got some problems. But if you bought one of these solvent traps in general, I believe the ATF will be sending you a nasty letter. Now, there's a disclaimer to all of this. I'm not giving anyone legal advice as to what to do in this situation. And certainly if you do find yourself in this situation and you wanna to talk to me, we can do that privately. What I am doing today through Washington Gun Law is giving all of you the state of the current law as it is and what the ATF is doing so that all of us as lawful and responsible gun owners can operate within the confines of the law. Listen, you may have more questions about these solvent traps, suppressors, or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights. And if you do, don't ever hesitate to contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com. Or, of course, you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, remember, part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.